All right, everybody, uh, we're going to get started. Um, can everyone please raise their hand uh, so that I know that you can hear me? Great, thanks. Um, so we can uh, get started on our topic for this month's Coffee Break webinar, and we're going to be doing it on facing your fears, seven common fears of AR automation. Um, a little nod to the fact that it is October already, um, and uh, Halloween is at the end of this month. Um, a little bit about myself. My name is Lindsay O'Brien. I am the uh, marketing brand manager of Anytime Collect. Um, it's an automated accounts receivable software. Um, and we've been around since 2008. So we've been, you know, had a lot of time in the industry and um, had a lot of time to really gather a lot of educational tips for um, everybody. Um, so with that, we'll get started. Um, our agenda for today, we're going to be going over the seven common fears of AR automation, why there's really nothing to fear, and then what the ROI is of using AR automation in your accounts receivable department. Okay, uh, our first um, common fear that we've seen over the years is that automation will change everything, um, which is completely true that it will change your processes um, and it will change um, the way that you um, conduct your accounts receivable collections, but it's not going to be changing it in a way that's anything to be afraid of or, um, or anything to, um, you know, maybe take away what you do in your job. It's only going to make it better. So um, what will automation exactly change? Um, it's just going to change the way that you go about getting things done and making it easier. So instead of spending a ton of your time on updating spreadsheets, rekeying information, printing aging reports, um, digging through your outlook and figuring out who you need to call and follow up on, maybe you're managing that right now on your outlook calendar, um, and going back and forth and putting data in your ERP system, um, that's no longer an issue because the automation will just do those things for you, which means then you're now spending your time calling people and doing the more important activities actually result in you um, gaining more cash flow. Another common fear is loss of control. Um, as you can see up on the screen, uh, we have a little blurb here talking about um, a lot of credit managers, controllers, and CFOs uh, are afraid of automating this process because they might feel that once it's being, uh, you know, done by a software that there's no control over what's happening in the accounts receivable department anymore. Um, but there is still that human interaction that's occurring. Like we said before, there's, um, you know, you're still calling those customers. It's allowing you to have that human interaction. Um, and it's also allowing your department to become more organized and efficient. So, you know, think about your current processes and your current policies. Do you really have that much transparency into what all, every collector is doing in the department? Does your CFO have the ability to go in and look at what you're doing and look at how many accounts have been, you know, called or, or, um, or how much, you know, cash is kind of sitting out there or, or what's forecasted? Um, a lot of the times these are paper-based uh uh, processes or the um, uh, or it's it's siloed on one computer so if you know you were to get sick or, or uh, one of your collectors were to get sick there's no way to really go in and find out where exactly were they in their processes um, but with automation all of this is built into the workflows and the rules engine so automation is defined by credit class you can you know create different workflows based on the various groups of customers that you have. And then this is occurring, um, you know, all out of one system. So there is that transparency there. Um, for example, if you want um, your collectors to be sending a reminder email currently to customers, you know, five days before an invoice is due, call on the day it becomes overdue, send a past due notice 10 days past due, and call a second time 15 days past due. How do you know that they're actually getting the, are able to get these um, processes completed. 
when it's everything is put into automation, you know that it's getting done, you can see what happened and you can see what's going to happen next. Uh, next, uh, one, another common fear is that it's difficult to implement and use. Um, so maybe you have experience um, implementing an ERP system. We all know that that's a, you know, a long and complicated implementation. Um, but with accounts receivable software, it's usually not a, uh, a really difficult uh, tool to implement. Um, and it usually doesn't take that long. And it's, you know, as long as you're choosing the right software for your company. Um, so you should be looking for a system that includes a set of predefined actions that are ready to use out of the box um, and that can be modified to, um, to work with your company and your company's needs, but will still streamline that, that process your, of your day-to-day -day activities. Um, the software you choose should be should have predefined actions that can provide alerts when a customer has an invoice due and additionally alerts as their um, invoice goes past due later and later and then the uh, the system that you choose should also be including training support user groups um, different tools to help your end users utilize the system in the most efficient and the best way possible so you know when you're out in the market and you're looking for something make sure that those uh, systems really check off all these boxes. Uh, the next fear that we see is, is cloud security. And as cloud has been around for a little bit now, so we don't see this as often anymore. You know, a lot of systems that you're using, maybe a CRM system um, or even an ERP system, a lot of these are now hosted in the cloud. Um, so one of the, the big concerns is data security. Um, but really the key to um, proper data security is just making sure that you choose a reputable system and a hosting provider um, that's reputable. So for Anytime Collect, um, our AR sys automated system, um, we host it with Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft is a really well-known company. Um, they're re really reputable and they've invested billions of dollars into their cloud platform um, and security. Um, and their sole job is to protect your data. Um, when it comes to data loss and control, uh, some businesses fear that cloud software providers will lock them into the software with no way to retrieve their data. So no longer does that data belong to you. And that's the big fear that a lot of companies have, um, especially with, you know, a lot of the more recent uh, cases with, you know, Facebook and Equifax, that can be um, a big concern. But there's vendors out there that don't do that. And you can easily find this out, you know, check their fax page. Um, on their website, you know, ask that during the sales process. What do you do with the data if we were to cancel our subscription? Um, does that data still belong to us? It's, you know, it's certainly fair game to ask those questions and make sure you are um, asking those questions uh, during the sales process. Um, and then downtime. Um, you know, some companies have expressed concerns to us that what if the internet goes down and then we don't have access to our software because it lives in the cloud. Um, for the most part, uh, internet out outages are pretty rare and um, you're more likely to experience a power outage um, that would also be affecting a premise-based system than an internet outage. Uh, so for example, um, you know, a couple of years back there was Hurricane Sandy and that storm affected more than 265,000 businesses in New York State alone. Um, and it shut down, you know, millions of employees out of uh, work for weeks because of these power outages, um, putting down their premise systems. Um, but if something like that were to happen, you know, a natural disaster, a fire, um, and those premise systems are down, if you're on a cloud system, you can go to Starbucks, you can work from home, you can, you know, if you're, you can go out of state for, um, you know, staying with family and you can still access your system because it's, it's in the cloud, it's in the internet. Um, you're not stuck in that, you know, premise system that's only in your company's office. Um, another uh, common misconception is that accounts receivable software is too expensive, but really with cloud software these days, it doesn't cost a ton of money to implement in accounts receivable software. Um, most small businesses, um, you know, they need this automation once you have around like 100 invoices monthly or maybe 100 customers um, 
and you can get a, a software system for a company size of, for only a hundred dollars a month hundred dollars per user per month um, when you move into the mid market these prices are usually around 100 to 300 dollars monthly for subscriptions um, and maybe around a thousand to three thousand dollars per user for a uh, license um, this means that there's, you know, there's more flexibility for price, really, depending on where you fit in the um, in the market. Um, and most mid market companies usually have like three to five full credit users, um, several inquiry users that can be used by sales managers or executives, um, and then enterprise size uh, organizations. They're typically on SAP or Oracle. They have huge um, accounts receivable teams. Um, really robust AR modules within their ERP systems. And I'm at this point, you know, the pricing can range anywhere from, you know, $5,000 to $15,000. Um, and implementations will take, you know, a little longer because the um, process is more robust. Um, another big concern is the negative reactions from both your customers and your employees, those end users that need to be in the system and using it every day. Um, so if any of you have been a part of a software implementation before, there's nothing worse than going through that entire implementation process only to find that no one's in the system and no one's using it. Um, but there are different ways that you can go about ensuring that that doesn't happen. Um, and the best way to do that is to, um, you know, address the concerns of your end users and, um, make sure that they understand how this is going to impact them in a positive way. Um, you know, how is it going to impact their daily activities? How will it benefit them um, as individuals working on their assignments daily and their tasks daily? How is it going to make their work easier? How is it going to make them more productive? And what pains it is, is it going to solve for them? When you frame the conversation in that way, you're going to see that your collectors are a little bit more um, interested in utilizing the system and it will increase the overall success of your organization um, implementing in accounts receivable software. Additionally, having, as we talked about before, you know, having in um, going with an autom in accounts receivable automation company that um, has really great training um, for those end users and user groups um, so that they don't get in the system and feel so overwhelmed that they, you know, aren't willing to, to learn anything more. And then uh, for your customer reactions. Um, a lot of people fear that customers are going to be put off if they um, automate, um, but you'd be surprised at how many customers love the automation because they're getting sent these email rem reminders more often. So most companies don't want to forget to pay you, but it does happen. So if you're guaranteeing that an email reminder is going to go straight out to customers, um, and that they're going to know exactly when to pay and they're going to have all the information in front of them, your customers are going to prefer that uh, situation as well. And on top of that, a lot of these emails that you can automate have the ability for customers to go into a customer payment portal where they can go in there and they can just pay their bill. They don't have to call you. They don't have to write a check. They can just make a credit card payment. Um, and when they have that option, customers usually prefer that too. You know, they don't want to take the time out of their day to pick up the phone and make a phone call. They want to be able to do that self-service. Um, another concern is that it just won't work. You know, what if I go through all this and it doesn't actually help me solve my problems? Um, and if you're choosing the right company and the right software for your business, this really isn't a problem. Um, in industry analysts, payment, uh, pay stream advisors, they found that uh, companies that are utilizing accounts receivable automation um, see a 20% reduction in DSO, 25% reduction in past due receivables, 15 to 25% reduction in bad debt reserves, and usually this is all seen in, in as little as two months. Um, you know, our customers that are using the system, we've seen them, say, you know, save 600 hours of time a month. And that's because they're no longer um, sending out emails by hand manually. And that's getting done um, just through aut the automation that they set up once. And now it just continues to go every month. Um, so they're able to use that time saved to, you know, make phone calls, reach out to customers, which is how they get this, you know, reduction in DSO, this reduction in past due receivables. 
And as we talk about ROI, um, once you have implemented an accounts receivable software, um, the ROI is seen in decreased financing costs. Um, so you, when you're using AR automation, you typically get paid 20% faster. So for example, if you are a company with $10 million in revenue and you're incurring, incurring about $10,000 in finance charges, um, when you get paid 20% faster, you're eliminating about $20,000 in finance costs every year. Um, same thing with bad debt write-offs. So um, studies have shown that companies are typically writing off 4% of accounts receivable annually to bad debt. Um, but if you're reducing your bad debt by 15 to 25% by using um, an automation, um, then you're, for, for example, again, if you're this $10 million company and you're writing off 400,000 annually, the 20% reduction um, provides about $80,000 annually in savings. Um, reduced staffing costs. As I mentioned before, you know, some of our customers are saving, you know, 600,000, or 600,000, sorry, uh, 600 hours uh, a month because they're no longer sending these manual emails. And that's not to say that you need to fire, you know, someone that's already on your staff. This is saying that as your company continues to grow, that you're, you don't have to increase your headcount. The automation will help you to manage the growth of your company without having to add on an additional person onto your team. Um, and then finally, reduce material costs. Um, how much time and money do you waste manually printing, preparing invoices, sending invoices and reminder letters? You know, paper is expensive, stamps are expensive, and when you're doing that on a large scale, if you you know, even just have 100 customers, it ends up adding up a lot. So if you can no longer send your statements out via mail or no longer send your invoices out via the mail and can do it all over email or allowing them to access those in that self-service, you know, payment portal, um, then you're able to greatly reduce your material costs. Uh, so we can um, open it up for question. I'm going to launch a poll right now. Um, so feel free to answer that um, and uh, feel free to ask any questions that you might have after uh, that might come across your mind. Right, don't have too many questions today. Well, we're gonna end just on time. Um, it is almost 11.50. Uh, make sure to uh, check out our website and our events page. Um, we do these quick, you know, 30 minute webinars um, or 20 minute webinars um, once a month. And, you know, we've done previous topics on how to write uh, collection emails using marketing tactics for more effectiveness. We've done things on how to overcome email collection hurdles, um, understanding the psychology of accounts receivable, a ton of really interesting topics. Um, so make sure to go and check out, you know, what's coming up next month and, and sign up for these Coffee Break webinars. Um, so thanks, everybody, for joining us and uh, have a great weekend.